Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to today's show. Listen, I am glad to be able to share with you um, the, a new series that I'm going to be teaching entitled How to Activate Your Dream Life to Hear from God. Let me say that again. How to Activate Your Dream Life to Hear from God. Because I want you to understand that it is a blessing when your dreams are used by God as a means to communicate with you. And there are tremendous benefits that comes from being able to hear from God in your dreams. But many times believers can have their dream life cut off to where they don't dream at all and they don't hear from God. And there are certain things that you can do to reactivate your dream life. And I want to begin to teach on that um, going forward over the next few weeks. And one of the things that I, I really want to stress to you is there are benefits that come with having your dream life activated. And one of the greatest benefits that I have found is that God will give you information concerning things before they happen. And that within itself is a benefit that is worth making sure your dream life is activated. And another benefit is God will reveal to you the plans of your enemies. And I kind of tell people, even in my family and close associates that very few things actually catch me by surprise. Um, if they catch me by surprise, then it's not really serious because my dream life has been active for so long until whenever something serious is about to happen, God will show it to me. And that's one of the benefits of having your dream life activated by God. When you think about it, when Jesus was a baby and Herod was planning to kill Jesus, God sent an angel to speak to Joseph, the father of Jesus, in a dream to reveal the plans of the enemy, to stop the actions that the enemy was trying to take to kill Jesus as an infant. And many times these kind of warnings are available to you as a believer, to available to you as a pastor, available to you as a prophet or as an evangelist or whatever your calling or operation in the body of Christ is. So you have this tool and you definitely need to make sure that you keep it activated. And the reason I'm teaching on this is because I want the people of God to understand that the enemy can blind your mind and he can blind your ability to not dream. And when you get into a predicament to where you can't hear from God in dreams or you can't hear from God in the word, then they, you can be blindsided by things that you don't see coming. And I have a, a, a sister that's sort of sickly ill. Um, and from time to time, she's in the hospital a lot. And many times when she's in the hospital, I won't even know. I have to call and find out that she's there, but she comes home fine. And there are times when the Lord will speak to me in a dream and show me that she is sick. And those are the times that I recognize that I need to take it a little bit more serious. And I go into prayer praying for her because God had shown me that this is a serious case at this time. So for that reason, um, I, I think it's worth me sharing with you how I keep my prayer life activated and, and definitely worth sharing with you how it makes life much easier knowing what you should really pay close attention to and what to not to allow yourself to be disturbed by. I remember uh, maybe two years ago, I got a phone call from one of my relatives and one of the babies in the family had gotten a hold to, I think some bleach or something. 
um, some type of chemical. I can't remember it off the top of my head. And oh, that's what it was. It got a hold to some medicine and took the medicine. And the baby was actually on life support and the family was torn. And I, I went into prayer immediately. And, and I said to my, one of my relatives, I said, I wouldn't worry about it. He said, why not? I said, because God hasn't shown me anything about this in advance. Normally, when something of this magnitude happens and it's going to be negative, he will show me. And so we prayed about it. And a few days later, they took the child off child support and the child is fine now. And so that's the benefit of being able to have that direct access for God to speak to you. I had a friend to reach out to me. Um, I want to say just last week, <laughs> maybe two weeks ago, and they were having problems on their job and they wanted some guidance and how to pray about it and how to go about um, how they felt like they were being sabotaged at work and not being treated fairly. And we began to pray and to strategize. And I gave the individual some directions and somebody else gave them some directions that were different from mine and they went against mine and did what the other person instructed them to do and it looked like things got worse and then I asked this person I said what has God shown you concerning this job and she sent me a text message saying God showed me that this position that I'm on, this contract that my company has, that it's about to go under and that this company is trying to pin some of the blame on me. And I just started working for this company. And I didn't thought about that. I said, well, it sounds like God is showing you that the ship that you're on is about to sink. So you don't need to be fighting to stay on it. You need to be taking steps to get off it. And she agreed with me and we started praying and she took some actions. And in about three days time, even though the policy of the company says that once you've been assigned to that position, you have to stay there for at least a year. In about three days time, they moved her off of that assignment to a, a better place. And see, that's what we were able to pray about. And God opened the door simply because she had gotten a dream a while back, but she really didn't pay attention to it. So you've got to keep that communication open with God and you've got to be focused to know how God is giving you a message. Now, one of the first things you have to do, and I'm going to give you just a few steps here today in order to activate your dreams is you must have a real prayer life. And when I say a real prayer life, I mean your prayer life has to be balanced in proportion to what you expect God to do. You cannot spend three hours on Facebook, um, one hour on Instagram and two hours watching TV and only pray for three minutes before you go to bed. That's not fair to God, even if you were a spouse and you spent all the other time outside of the house and you only spent three minutes with your spouse. That's not fair to your spouse. So when you begin to develop a real prayer life, then it opens up the door of communication with God. Now, one of the things that you can some of the things that you will notice is when you don't have a real prayer life is you will be victimized in your dreams. Let me say that again. When you don't have a real hot prayer life, you will be victimized in your dreams. You will see yourself being attacked. You will see yourself being chased. You will see yourself falling. You will see yourself sinking and drowning. You will see yourself being victimized in your dreams. People will be mistreating you, shooting at you, doing all of these negative things at you because you don't really have the spiritual stamina 
to fight in the spirit what the enemy is bringing against you. And it's because you're not praying. You cannot spend all of this excess time that God has given you outside of your daily work routine doing idle things and then expect to be able to be equipped to fight spiritually. You have to set aside time to make yourself available to God to pray to have a real prayer life. When your prayer life becomes hot, when your prayer life becomes consistent, when your prayer life becomes on point with God, you'll start to see things change in your dream life. What will happen is instead of people pushing you around in your dreams, you start saying, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take that. Instead of people chasing you and catching you, you find yourself flying away from them, escaping the attack that's coming from you. And that's one of the signs that your prayer life is on point and you need to keep that consecration going forward. And this is a... Um, pretty much going to be a pretty long series because there's so much that I need to share with you that I have so little time to do. But the number one thing you need to make certain that you do is that you have a prayer life. And when you pray, you need to be specific in your prayers. Because if you're asking God to reveal something to you, then you need to know what it is you need for him to speak about. And I like to tell people, deal with the root of the problem and not the fruit of the problem. Let me say that again. Deal with the root of the problem and not the fruit of the problem. If there's a problem going on that you need to know about, ask God what is the root of the problem. See, when you pray, ask God if there's something going on in your marriage. God, show me the root of this problem. Because you can deal with the fruit, but as long as the root is still in the ground, the fruit will keep coming. But when you kill it at the root, it'll stop the fruit from manifesting. So when you start praying, ask God to show you the root of these things and the Lord will begin to show you visions of what the problem is. And you may not understand it right off the bat, but at least you are now getting communication back from God concerning the problem. And once you begin to do this more and more, you're going to see clarity in your walk with God. Well, I'm almost out of time, but I want to stop now so I can pray with you because I believe that God is going to do a mighty work in your life and that when you set yourself to fast and pray more and to consecrate yourself, that God is going to activate your dreams and he's going to speak to you more and more. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your word and we thank you for the method that you choose to speak to different people by Lord. We thank you that you speak to all people in dreams, O oh God. But we pray now that you would give us the ability to listen and to hear and to understand what you are saying to us. Father, we thank you for your word that you have placed in us this day. Allow us to go forward in our lives and to activate our dream life that we could hear from you and not be caught off guard by the tactics of our enemies and we would know which direction to go in in everything that we do father we thank you we praise you and we bless you in jesus mighty name we pray amen well god bless you i want you to stay tuned um to this broadcast and on next week, we're going to be continuing this series. So God bless you and have a wonderful day.